I feel like it's been ages since I've reviewed a Souls-like game, but I couldn't pass up the opportunity to talk about Sands of Aura. This indie Souls-like that mixes open-world, dungeon crawler, and action RPG elements has one of the more unique settings I've seen in the genre and some incredible world-building and lore to back it up. I was hooked from start to finish, and while it certainly wasn't without flaws, I'm excited to share my experience with you. My name's Johnny Bueno, and let's take a look at Sands of Aura. Before jumping into the world, Sands of Aura will have you create your very own custom-made character that looks like something straight out of a Tim Burton movie due to the I Always Skip Leg Day proportions. No matter how much facial hair you put on your character, it somehow ends up looking like a child wearing a fake beard, and I found this to be both charming and kind of funny. No matter how goofy your character looks, though, they take a heroic role in the story as a member of the Order of Remnant Knights, the last protectors of man in what is very much a post-apocalyptic world known as Talamel. The world is quite obviously covered in a sea of sand, and any remnants of life now live on a handful of islands and tall spires dotted throughout the land. As a remnant knight, you'll be traveling to each of these islands on a journey that starts with simply securing a water supply for your home of Starspire, but quickly evolves into something that decides the fate of the entire world, or what's left of it at least. One of the strong points of Sands of Aura is that the world of Talamel is genuinely interesting, with a significant amount of world building and lore presented to you through fully voiced NPCs, item descriptions, and even the environment itself. Every island you visit seems to have a unique story to tell, while also adding more background to the world as a whole. The Colossus of Radiance, for example, is a giant hand reaching out of the ground which is known for its alleged treasures, but also serves as a key monument for Talamel's more religious inhabitants. This adds a pretty satisfying sense of discovery and pushes players to uncover the mysteries of Talamel by combing through every island available. Honestly, the concept of a world buried in sand is intriguing enough on its own, so I'm glad the developers went above and beyond to do it justice. As far as traversing the world goes, you'll do so in a sand surfing vehicle known as a Grain Wake. This is your sole mode of travel to get to the other islands in Talamel, as simply jumping into the sand will lead to instant death. The long-standing Souls-like rule of not being able to swim lives on in Sands of Aura, even if the water is replaced by something that's coarse, irritating, and gets everywhere. One of my favorite parts of riding the Grain Wake, though, is how the camera shifts from the usual top-down, isometric style to a more over-the-shoulder style to give the world a serious sense of scale. This was a fantastic design choice, as being able to see all of the locations far off in the distance makes the world feel huge, and when traveling, some islands are actually much further away than they initially appear. On top of that, no matter where you are, you'll be able to see the incredibly imposing Pillar of Entropy, which not only serves as the centerpiece of the world map, but also a central figure in the lore of the world. Just another aspect that adds a layer of mystery to the world and makes uncovering its secrets worth your time. The Pillar of Entropy looms over us all. A wicked monument to our failure. Combat in Sands of Aura plays like any other Souls-like title, with dodge rolling, parrying, limited healing, and fairly challenging boss fights. Facing too many enemies at once can lead to a quick death, and for the most part, you need to be thoughtful on how you walk into an enemy encounter. There are, however, a few differences that set Sands of Aura apart from others in the genre, for better or for worse. Blocking creates a full shield around your character that can stop attacks from all directions, as opposed to blocking only attacks from the front, which makes avoiding damage slightly easier for those less experienced with Souls-like combat. The game also has what I felt to be a fairly forgiving parry window, which, when performed correctly, has the added effect of temporarily stunning enemies, including bosses. So, if you can become a parry master, you can essentially trivialize a handful of the game's bosses by chain-stunning them and pounding their backside where they take critical damage. Although, some of the game's major bosses do put up a serious fight, and despite parrying being somewhat overpowered, they sent me to the death screen over and over again. Fortunately for me, I was fresh off of beating Lies of P before I picked up this game, so my parry skills were already honed to perfection. Either way, my point is that Sands of Aura does give players the tools to have what I'd consider to be a somewhat more relaxed, Souls-like experience. What's not relaxing is the lack of a lock-on feature, which, when also factoring in the game's stiff attack animations, can often lead to you mindlessly swinging at air. Admittedly, I haven't played too many isometric-style games that have a lock-on feature, but I also haven't played too many Souls-likes that don't have it. When enemies can delete you in a few hits, it should be crucial to keep your perspective locked towards them so you're prepared to avoid their attacks. Without it, this can lead to some frustrating enemy encounters, especially when you're being attacked from all sides. Overall, it's not a total deal-breaker, as I was able to complete the game just fine, but there were several occasions, especially early on, where it felt like I was frantically swinging my weapon around, praying attacks would connect. When it comes to actually hitting things, each style of weapon will come with a unique special attack that can heavily determine what weapon you want to stick with for your playthrough. 
Spears have a charging attack, heavier two-handed weapons have a large conal AoE attack, and dual weapons like the dual axes can be thrown in an arc pattern to hit distant enemies. I found myself partial to the two-handed swords as I could wipe out large groups of enemies with a single special attack and because I just like big weapons. While this all sounds pretty standard, what really elevates combat, at least for me, was the Spellblade system. This essentially augments your attack, block, and dodge commands with an element of your choosing to create an additional special effect. For example, augmenting your dodge with fire will leave a trail of fire behind you that damages enemies over time. Augmenting your block action with time magic will reflect damage back onto an attacking enemy, and augmenting attacks with lightning magic will create a chain lightning effect. These are just a few examples, but I love this way of customizing your approach to combat and how it gives you more tools to build your ideal character. However, you only start the game off with the fire element, and the rest have to be unlocked through finding tomes in the world, which ties into what I want to talk about next. As an open world game, there's plenty of exploration to be had in Sands of Aura. When not scavenging for resources on your grain wake, there's a pretty impressive level of free movement as you can jump on and attempt to climb just about anything with little to no invisible walls blocking your path. There's treasure to be found that can sometimes require a bit of platforming, and this can include upgrade materials, armor pieces, and various unlockables for your character, like the previously mentioned elemental tomes. It's usually worth combing an island multiple times because, at least in my case, there is usually some important loot I missed out on on my first trip. However, it should be noted that the game doesn't feature any type of area map. All you get is a world map, so when you land on an island, you're on your own. Par for the course for a Souls-like game, but because of the game's isometric camera, distant landmarks that help you orient yourself aren't immediately visible. This led to my perspective with the area sometimes getting confused, and I ended up hopelessly lost on several occasions with no idea how to get back to the nearest checkpoint. It's definitely something you get used to after a while, but might be off-putting when starting out. For powering up your player-made Tim Burton fanfic character, Sands of Aura features a system that is entirely based around crafting and upgrading gear, rather than the usual system of leveling up. Glint serves as the primary form of currency in the game to feel those upgrades, and because this is a Souls-like, your glint will of course be dropped on the ground when you inevitably die. Return to your location of death to get your dropped glint back, and if you die again before that happens, it's gone for good. Assuming you kept your glint, though, you can use it to craft your own highly customizable weapon, which happens to be one of the more interesting aspects of the game. There are four key components that go into a crafted weapon, the fighting style, weapon head, pommel, and codex. Fighting style differentiates how you swing your weapon, like stabbing or slashing, and can add effects like stun chance or longer parry windows. The weapon head dictates the actual type of weapon you're creating, like an axe or sword, and the pommel and codex essentially slot in additional on-hit effects, like a stacking damage buff or enemy armor reduction. This system opens up an insane number of ways to create the perfectly optimized weapon for your character. I love this as it puts a deeper level of build customization in the player's hands, and it also ties back in exploration as pommels and codexes need to be discovered in the world or through completing quests. Once crafted, you can then spend glint and upgrade materials to upgrade your weapon all the way up to rank 20. Fortunately, if you find a new pommel or codex you like, you don't need to craft a brand new weapon and start over from rank 1, as you can swap them out for a small fee. Just like with weapons, you'll be obtaining and upgrading various pieces of gear, however these aren't craftable and are typically found in chests throughout the various islands of Talamel or through quest rewards. The thing is, the base stats of all gear pieces in the game are essentially identical, with one piece of gear giving the same exact bonuses to health and armor as any other piece of gear at that same rank. Where the build potential comes into play is with the runes you slot into them. Like many other customization aspects of the game, runes are obtained as loot during your journey and they can be slotted into gear for a percentage increase to a specific stat. This can include increased health, armor, spellblade damage, or critical damage. The higher rank your gear, the more runes you can slot in, up to a total of 6, and runes even have their own rank and rarity levels, with higher ranks providing larger stat bonuses. It's a little more simplistic compared to the weapon crafting system, but it still gives players an immense amount of freedom with how they build their character, which is always a huge plus in my book. Adding on to that, there are unique bonuses you can get when equipping multiple pieces of gear from the same set. Because you obtain a set bonus when wearing two pieces from the same set and you have a total of four gear slots, you're free to either mix and match two different sets for two different bonuses, or wear one full set for a single maximized set bonus. So, selecting gear in Sands of Aura is less about the stats, as you can customize those yourself, and more about the set bonuses that fit your playstyle the best. Or just pick the set with the most drip like I did, as style is far more important than an optimized build. One final note, you may also discover lost talismans when out exploring that can be equipped by speaking to a priestess in town. These can include simple stat boosts like reduced damage taken or increased damage dealt with a specific fighting style, but some also offer handy utility effects like automatic glint pickup or enhanced lighting in dark areas. 
Nothing too crazy here, but just another factor in your character build and a reason to keep your eyes peeled for loot when exploring the islands of Talamel. Sands of Aura brings us a Souls-like experience with an impressive level of build customization and deep world building that sets it apart from many others in the genre. Despite some minor combat jank due to the lack of a lock-on system, as well as some character perspective frustrations with the game's isometric camera and absence of a map, it's still a genuinely impressive effort from a small indie studio. So, if you're still looking for something to fill the void while we wait another five years for the Elden Ring DLC or Bloodborne to release on PC, Sands of Aura just might be worth your time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or sharing your thoughts on Sands of Aura in the comments below. I appreciate every bit of interaction and support as I love making videos just like this one. So please consider subscribing to support the channel, and as always, thank you for watching.